My name's Nathan, I'm 19 and I'm from Hertfordshire. I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, which is an anxiety disorder characterised by intrusive thoughts and unwanted images, which can be incredibly debilitating, such as the thought that you might harm a child or uh, harm a member of your family. If you see a knife, you might worry that you're going to accidentally stab a member of your family. And then you will continually obsess over that and worry about that and make, and make sure that you, you don't put yourself in a situation where you would be able to do such a, a bad act. Suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder can make me feel incredibly anxious at times and as I previously said it is incredibly debilitating. Everyday things seem to be a lot harder than they are for most people. Um, my mind never seems to stop at times, at most of the time and I can be incredibly run down at the end of the day. Even after doing relatively little I'm just constantly thinking uh, and that, that really runs me down a lot. And I can get incredibly stressed, um, the obsessiveness leads to depression. Um, and then obviously the depression can also lead to the obsessiveness so it runs around in circles so it makes me feel worthless scared indifferent, apathetic mad OCD can have quite a detrimental effect on my life, especially when I'm in exaggerated states of obsessiveness um, and fixated on s s certain things, for instance, um, worrying that I might be a, a child killer or an animal abuser. Um, waking up can be incredibly hard and also going to sleep on time, my, my sleeping patterns are incredibly erratic, my eating habits can either it can be sporadic as well, I can go from eating an awful lot of junk food to eating nothing at all. Um, I, get, I suffer from depression on a daily basis, it makes me again feel worthless and prevents me from doing things, going out of the house sometimes I can't, is, is incredibly hard for me. I first noticed my condition when I was 15, in fact I didn't notice my condition, my, my GP noticed. And uh, at the time I had no understanding of obsessive compulsive disorder, I had no understanding of really many mental health conditions. So. I think I was quite worried at the time of being diagnosed and apprehensive and again I didn't understand what it was. I didn't even understand it was a real disorder, I just thought it was something trivial like people obsessively washing their hands. I was diagnosed with OCD when I was 16 by a psychiatrist at the local hospital. Being diagnosed with OCD had quite a positive effect on me at the time and my state of mind. I found it quite reassuring that I could put a name to the worries that were going on in my mind. Family and friends understand the condition a lot more now and understand that it can have quite a bad effect on, on my well-being. And also I think in the long run it has quite a long, it has a, quite a negative effect on my family and friends as well. They have to experience me in quite bad conditions at times and, and don't really know how to deal with me I guess and, and don't really know don't really know what's going on in my mind but I think as much as that they may not understand at times they try to. I'm currently taking a hundred milligrams of sertraline daily. I haven't really noticed too many side effects of taking sertraline though sometimes when I may miss a dose uh, I can have quite bad headaches and feel dizzy um, also sometimes my appetite may increase or decrease, I may, may have a lack of appetite or, or an exaggerated appetite. Um, sleeping patterns again can be quite erratic, I mean my sleeping patterns are erratic anyway but I notice sometimes if I've missed a dose or two um, that can have a knock-on effect on my sleeping pattern. The lowest point so far that I can recollect in my lifetime was probably September 2012. Um, I was in and out of the local psychiatric departments all the time um, at the local mental health clinics just worried and, and, and seemed to be crying all the time um, I was concerned with with being a, a child abuser that I was a child abuser um, and I had all these thoughts coming in my head telling me that I was this and telling me that I was that and everywhere I looked it seemed to remind me of the person that I thought I was or the person that I thought I was becoming if I saw a child on the, the TV that would provoke anxiety and that would lead to a, get more intrusive thoughts um, and I would constantly be online looking up symptoms of certain disorders and personality disorders and diagnosing myself with all sorts of things really and that, that was the worst time, that was, that was the time when I 
just didn't want to live anymore. That was the only time in my life, I think, when I've fully contemplated suicide. I've, I've thought about that a lot of times, but I've never, never really put anything into place, but decided how I'm going to commit suicide. So that, that was probably the worst time. Sometimes I was just sleeping constantly and crying all the time. CD probably has had a few positive effects on my life. I think the negative effects far outweigh any, any positive though. Suffering from OCD at times has, has enlightened me to mental health conditions and I've gained more of an understanding of myself I guess from being diagnosed with OCD and from suffering from OCD. Um, and it's allowed me to, to rethink things and to think in detail and to look back at and to acknowledge that there were times when I was low and there were times when I was not wanting to live and then and to be thankful for for coming out of that period and and almost as if I was enlightened so I think it sometimes it it feels like it can have sometimes it it appears that it's just all negative but I think sometimes it can have a few positive effects if I could get rid of my condition I happily would really it's incredibly debilitating and it makes simple, negligible things so hard. Things that everybody takes for granted. So so hard, you know, not being able to get things off of my mind when I really want to. It just, it aggrandises every small problem that may occur in my daily life, which isn't really in comparison to other people, isn't a problem at all. There's a stigma attached to mental health in general, I don't think it's necessarily specific to young people. I think a lot of young people don't really have a full comprehensive understanding of different mental disorders. Um, hence the, the misconception about OCD, the, the stereotypical OCD, I suffer from OCD. Um, I think there's less of a stigma, stigma now than there ever has been. Um, and I think we're progressing a lot, the society is progressing a lot and we're gaining more of an understanding of, of mental health conditions and, and we're understanding that that a lot of people suffer from them and it doesn't make you mad that you suffer from a mental health condition. So the stigma, I think there's definitely a stigma attached with OCD, I think less so than with other mental health conditions, uh, schizophrenia for instance, I think there's more of an understanding than OCD, not necessarily a full understanding but more of an understanding. I think I, think I, would, I would say that OCD is probably the most misconceived and misunderstood mental health condition there is. So I, I definitely think there's a stigma against that. Sometimes a, a lot of young people don't really understand what's going on with them and, and a lot of parents for instance think that's a product of of being a teenager. My, my mum thought that what was going on with me was purely a product of of being a teenager and and all sorts of hormonal imbalances etc. So I think sometimes I think it's the parents that need more of an understanding and to understand that young people do and can suffer from mental health conditions and it can affect their daily life and it can affect how they feel and it's not some mental health conditions especially depression isn't something that is just experienced by older people. I think I think people are incredibly private when it comes to mental health conditions obviously mental health conditions are, are less conspicuous than a physical condition or a phys physical abnormality. So I think it's hard to express sometimes what's really going on in your mind without sounding ridiculous, sounding mad, sounding stupid. I think especially young people find it incredibly hard to express themselves and to, uh, and even younger children to, to really express what's going on in their heads if they have a, a mental health condition um, and what's worrying them. And I think, again, people will assume that there's a stigma attached to mental health and they'll be perceived as being mad. And maybe sometimes in their workplace they'll be, they, they might assume they'll be fired or their colleagues will disapprove of them and, and make crude derogatory remarks. And especially at school, a time when, you know, you're, you're supposed to be quote unquote normal and, and you're, you know, you feel like you just want to fit in. I think the last thing you want to do is to proclaim your, your mental health condition. There are many things that I wish people knew about obsessive compulsive disorder. The main thing being that it's not just about people who obsessively wash their hands. It affects how people feel and think. 
and I wish people would understand that a lot of what goes on with with OCD sufferers is, is is in their mind and it it's less obtrusive. I wish people would stop using the, the term OCD in everyday use for things which bear no relation to obsessive compulsive disorder. A lot of the time people would say oh you're so OCD or because somebody likes something done in a certain way and, and I think a lot of that plays a big part in the misunderstanding of OCD and I think the media fuel that as well um, and I wish the media would would stop portraying OCD as that type of disorder. I think the worst thing someone can say to somebody suffering from a mental health condition is to stop worrying or to grow up or to get over themselves. I think a lot of advice offered to people suffering from mental health conditions is offered in blind faith and I think a lot of people don't really understand how to to offer suitable advice or interact with others with mental health conditions. I think one of the most common misconceptions about people with mental health conditions is that it's self-inflicted um, and that it's really not as severe as the person may make out. I think there's lots of support available for young people suffering from mental health conditions. Less so for young people suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder, but in general I believe there is a lot of support for young people and, and older people suffering from mental health conditions. We have local mental health clinics, there's support groups available. Some of the only thing that I think that many people would complain about is the waiting time for therapy uh, and, and treatment I think can be quite long. Living with my condition I think the normal things that I miss out on are probably social situations, uh, friends party sometimes and and going out with my friends because I might feel at a time anxious and not really wanting to socialise and not want, not really wanting to see people so I think that that's probably the normal things that, that has effect on. I think it, it also has an effect on, on my education sometimes I'm, I'm preoccupied on, on the obsessive thoughts and I, I don't find time to sit down and, and to study and I constantly procrastinate and I end up not really getting much done which then can lead to, to further anxiety and, and depression and uh, self-esteem problems. My condition can at times have quite severe effects on my relationships with friends and family. Sometimes I can be incredibly elated and then at the other end of the spectrum I can be incredibly indifferent and, and depressed and I think a, lo a lot of people find it hard to deal with me in both situations and um, find it hard to to tell whether I'm being serious or not, whether I'm how how to approach me, and whether I'm sensitive at a certain time, and I think people can sometimes find it hard to connect with me in that in that sense, and I can find it hard to connect with other people as well. I think the adjective normal is quite an ambiguous word; it's quite an ambiguous term, and I think normality is so so subjective. I don't think it has a a, a definite meaning. I don't think there is anybody that would feel normal. I certainly don't feel normal and I, I know a lot of people don't feel normal because there's nothing to compare it to because as humans we're so incredibly different, our personalities are so so incredibly different. I guess sometimes you could describe normal as, as lack of anxiety in terms of a mental health condition and lack of worry and a, a sort of stable life and, and a stable upbringing. But I think there's there's many people, most people will say that there's been times in their life, if not now, that they feel abnormal and they feel like they don't fit in. So I don't, I, as I said, I don't think there is, I don't think normality exists. The thing that's helped me most so far is knowing that this isn't forever. Although there are times when I feel like this is going to go on forever and ever, I, I know that there are periods when I do feel elated and I do feel optimistic and I, I do look forward to things. And, and just knowing that there is that little glimpse of hope I think keeps me going because if, if I didn't have that then I think it would be a lot easier for me just to give up, just to, to stop. But knowing that, you know, just one day of happiness and one day of being able to feel normal or being able to feel even gives me hope and and makes me want to stay alive things like waking up and seeing the sun at times and and seeing that the world is just full of opportunity and, and to throw that away at the first hurdle i think would be 
incredibly stupid knowing that I'm not the only person that suffers from this condition and knowing that there is a large support network out there of fellow sufferers has helped me a lot also and knowing that I have friends and family to support me my biggest hopes for the future are to achieve happiness really I mean not not a continual sense of happiness not not being happy every day and waking up every day being happy but being content with my life and, and being content with the person that I am or the person that I've become or I'm or I'm becoming and I have little goals at, at going to university making friends I think for me as an individual it's far more important for me to achieve these little goals and they are the steps for me to achieve the greater goals. Well, they're not greater goals, but for the, for the, the goals which a lot of people would perceive as being quite large. Because for me, achieving these little goals are incredibly hard and incredibly, incredibly laborious. So I think I first need to focus on those things and then I can think about long-term goals. And my biggest fears for the future are probably that I'm just going to be stuck like this forever and I'm never going to achieve anything because of my condition and because I am lazy and I fear that I will end up indifferent towards life and angry and bitter in my old age because, I, because of lack of achievement and that's probably the biggest thing that scares me